Hi, and welcome to a new video for Aperture Speaks. And we've been away for quite a while. Um, I think the last video was back in the beginning of December and November last year. And this was, uh, I had a break over Christmas, and I'm now coming back in about the middle of January, and we'll see if we can start keeping up with some regular videos again. So this week, the topic is going to be making a very simple, um, abstract, swirly uh, screen um, wallpaper for your phone. Um, I'm actually taking the idea of using this on my Galaxy phones, so I read up on roughly the right size you should make a document, and they're saying it should actually be a square. Um, this, I, I sort of understand why, because when you actually uh, you take a photograph and you want to have this as your wallpaper, it crops it in two in two different ways, in two different directions, for when you um, turn it over. So keep that in mind, we have to keep the idea that this will be a square, the picture will be a square, but it will only be like the probably the middle third, um, vertically and horizontally, which will actually become the wallpaper. So one starting with just a normal blank document. I'm just gonna unlock that one there. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just go filter, um, render, and then clouds. And it gives this sort of black and white cloudy sort of thing. And then that's gonna go filter and then pixelate and get to this one here, mesotint or mesotint. Sorry, and choose the short strokes. So once I'm in there, you get this sort of very strange look. And then once again, filter, this time blur, radial blur. We're about 100, you know, you can, you can put this off center if you want, you can have it lower down or higher up. I'm sort of going to keep it in the center really, because it'll be quite good for the actual overall final image. And so we get this. And now we just don't need to make the swirl pattern. Which is going to be filter, and this one's going to be distort and twirl. And I'm actually going to do it by about 120 for the first bit. And you get this sort of 12 motion. Now, what I'm going to do now is colorize it using hue and saturation. So I click, I'm going to click colorize, and the first color I'm going to want is actually off on the greeny yellow side here. Probably a little light on the saturation. Okay, and that's where it's going to start from. Now it's going to duplicate this first layer, which really I should name, so I'll just name it twirl1. So I'm just going to duplicate it, drop it above, and then I'm going to go filter distort twirl again, and just make the twirl a little bit more, so we'll twirl it to 180, and then change the blending mode to lighten. And you can see here the two layers sort of cutting in to one another. And now I can add another hue and saturation layer. This time you need to clip the hue and saturation adjustment. And so I'm going to go for like um, a dark blue sort of purple color. So if I click colorize again, probably need to be about here. I need to pick, make sure it looks right. It'll be a bit. There we go. Maybe more there. Now, what I'm going to do is duplicate this layer again, so 121 again. I'll bring in this to 122. Okay, so I'll duplicate 121 and drop this one in here. Okay. Um, once again, make the adjustment to lighten and then go filter, distort, twirl. But this time I'm going to go backwards. Now, originally we had the original twirl at 120. So if you go to a minus 120, it's just going to take it back to normal. And I'll show you. It just takes it back straight to the original we had. So I do that once. And then I can go filter. Uh, so I'll go control. Um, we'll go back a step in the history, actually, probably. Well, so just go to blending option, and then I'll go filter, distort, twirl. So I want to do minus 100, and I want it minus 120 for normal, so then I have to minus 120 on top of that, so I'll make it minus 240. And this time, I had a hue and 
saturation layer again. Clip him out, remember. And so this time now I want to go into more of the red and orange. So pass more here. Now I'm going to boost up the saturation on this a little bit. And now I'm just going to do on the other two now, just so I can see what, it all starting, what it's all starting to look like. That looks, like, that looks quite nice there. So you're getting a really sort of swirly, twirly sort of effect here. Now the one thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add in here um, something which sort of brightens up the center. And the best way to do that is actually to use um, another filter. So I'm going to fill this layer with black. And I'm going to go filter, render, lens flare. Now there's different types of lens flare you can choose, but I'm actually, I quite like to use um, this one here and keep the brightness of normal. This level it gives you. And now I can set this to screen. And the black sort of fades away, and you get this very sort of bright spot uh, into the middle. And then I have a hue, hue and saturation layer just to sort of bring and clip it. Just to sort of bring it in light. Now I would normally do it by the first layer, which was a very greenish sort of color, just to add more emphasis to that green. There. Okay. So what I'm now going to quickly do, if I just pull this up, I'm going to duplicate all my layers. Filter, other, high pass. Five will be about enough. Then overlay. And this is just to um, give some sort of extra detail so you can actually um, and sharpen these uh, lines we have here. I'm also going to go curves, get a curves adjustment, and just bring in the black. So like levels adjustment, and just bring in the black here. Create a new layer. Uh, fill this with black again. Set this to overlay, and then get a layer mask, brush black. And what I'm going to do is want to, I want to sort of like black out. I want to mask out the middle section, but I want to have it so it sort of is masked in line with the swirls a little bit. So it's as if the swirls are actually part of this. So I'm just going to do this now quickly. I'm using a low opacity, about 14, and what will happen is hopefully all these sort of adjustments, different sizes of brushes, just working it in, would hopefully mask, um, build up the masking a bit. Okay. And then I'm going to duplicate this layer again, and set it to multiply. Now with the multiply layer, I really just want to have a very quite low opacity, and it's really just to emphasize and really darken the areas on the outside. <coughs> okay. So it's to black. So this is what it looks like on the computer. And when I go on the phone, what I'll have to, be able to do is to use the cropping to crop it. So I'll put it onto the phone and I'll show you the image. So here we are with the screenshot from the cropping on the phone. So as I said, if you have the square, then you can sort of, the cropping naturally comes here and here. So you sort of want to keep the main part of the image you want in here. And once it was cropped, um, it actually looked like uh, this on the home screen. So that doesn't look too bad. The only thing I probably would do now in, in looking at it on the phone and looking at it back again on the computer is to go back into here. And what I would do is possibly um, just increase, uh, increase the saturation a little bit overall.
So I'll just pop in the here. Well, maybe even vibrance would be a bit better option. Just increasing that vibrance, saturation, just to make it just a little bit more colourful. It is going to be on a. Is the idea is if for it to go onto a mobile phone, so uh, you may want to have a little bit more vibrant. And possibly on the level on the levels here, just make it a bit brighter and those whites is less dull. So that's the only change I'll make. So there we are. If you want to follow my blog, you can do. It's on wordpress.com forward slash after 64. You can also follow me on Twitter, which is at after 64. And I also have a Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash after 64. This time I'm typing out 64. I hope to have a video up next week. So until then, goodbye.